Hey there, so we just returned from IMAX America 2023 in Las Vegas, and I'd like to give you a little bit of an insight into what I saw at the show. So first of all, this was a big show, definitely a record-breaking show. I think we heard it almost had 15,000 people there. Initially, we'd heard that about approximately 17,000 or even more, 17 and a half had registered, but it turns out 15,000 or just under 15,000 actually showed up. It's impressive. It's definitely the largest show ever, but the good news is there's still room to grow. So the show floor will probably grow in different ways, kind of round corners, but there is uh, room to grow. Of course, it is a very large show, and like I had in uh, at IMAX in Frankfurt, I had this kind of sense of constant FOMO, where I was trying to try to do everything and, and be everywhere, and of course you can't do that. I prepared myself a little bit better this time, made a lot of appointments in advance, but was very busy throughout the show, and there's lots of people that I saw or sort of waved at very quickly, but didn't actually get a chance to speak to, so it's always unfortunate, but that's the way it is with these large shows. One thing uh, I noticed a lot on the show floor was the booths were nice they were very open they were airy there was a good feel to the show but i didn't see too many boots that really stood out what i did see that stood out were the activations on the way into the show floor there was a row of activations different different things that you could do uh, different kind of opportunities for photos for example and that actually worked really well also during smart monday the day before the show when there was a lot of education going on there was a lot of activations there was a lot of things happening there was a pause for a cause where you could meet some uh, dogs some kind of uh, different activities with with our fuzzy uh, furry friends actually um, and there were other activations dj graffiti was there playing some music there was lots of other things going on and i think in a busy trade show floor like this it's really important that brands kind of stand out. And I think standing out with booth design is, is increasingly hard. Um, as long as a booth is functional and it works well and it's easy to understand uh, what who the exhibitor is or what the exhibitor does, then I think from then on, it's nice when you have more lights, different things going on. But I think the off the trade show activations or sort of side activations, I think are really important for brands to stand out. There was also a lot of kind of activity on the show floors and some technology, there was some quite techy kind of photo activations that I thought were interesting. There were some holograms. I saw Karina Bauer, the CEO of IMX, kind of do a little hologram presentation on the way into the event. Uh, and those things also kind of stood out. They weren't the normal kind of event technology activities, but they were they added a little spice, a little bit extra to the show. And, and I welcome seeing uh, technology be, being used in that way. One thing that impressed me a lot was the Inspiration Hub, the kind of home of education at IMAX America. It was really big. There were five different uh, kind of education areas, uh, then some extra also kind of campfires and little areas. And also the Google XI co-laboratory was there, very experimental. And of course, that focus on neurodiversity, uh, also just all types of diversity and inclusion. So really interesting area to explore really big so a lot of attention to education which is really nice to see i mean imax america and imax in frankfurt are all about the business they're all about the appointments but the education is an important part of it um, and i thought that was really really good to see there were some technical issues i did a presentation there on wednesday morning um, they had the silent headphones kind of setup which is always welcome in these busy environments there were some issues it wasn't quite you know the audio wasn't perfect um, and also there was the lighting in the area was a little strange. Uh, if you can see in the photos, there's a sort of like pinkish light that, that is present in all that area. It didn't look bad in person, but it made kind of, it was a little uncomfortable. I would have preferred to have some more kind of natural light. I don't know what the thinking was there, but you know, small detail, but I would prefer some more kind of natural or kind of warmer light. I think that would have made the space feel even more welcoming. And also in the images, you see this kind of very pinkish kind of image. So not ideal necessarily. Just like at IMAX in Frankfurt, there was a new uh, technology behind the appointment systems. It's a very important part of IMAX to be able to make those appointments between uh, destinations or any exhibitors and hosted buyers. Um, got some mixed feedback around that. I think some destinations, once again, were hoping for the old system to be there, so some hadn't used it yet. Uh, a little bit like in Frankfurt, they liked the old system. They were used to going in and being able to message hundreds if not thousands of people in one go this isn't possible in the new system it works in a slightly different way so it takes a lot more work to go and find the people that might be interested in your product uh, i did speak to a few exhibitors that put a lot of work behind that understood the system and then got you know agendas full filled with appointments some even had to remove seats from their stand because they had a small stand but i uh, wanted to have more and more appointments so Definitely um, worth putting in the work there. I think it's very important to have that agenda fully booked before you head to the show. So I definitely recommend investing some more time in that. And I understand that it takes a lot more work and a lot of sales teams are very small. They only have uh, maybe one person, but 
It is also good, I think, from the perspective of the buyers, whether visitor or hosted, that idea that when someone contacts you, they really, they've done some research, they think that you might be really interested in that product. So I think it's, it's a good match, more work, but hopefully creates uh, better meetings and better productivity on and then after the show, of course. There was a lot of new technology being used. We're gonna do an article about that later on with more details. But of course, there's this new uh, appointment system that I just mentioned with Expo Platform. But also, there was a three integration, three-way integration with Crowd Connected that provided the wayfinding and kind of mapping facilities. The map was created by Expo FB, and then Crowd Connected provided the wayfinding, so you could actually spot where you were on the map. And that was possible through uh, beacon technology. So there was these uh, little uh, beacons, uh, Bluetooth beacons, actually, uh, spread around all over the show, I think around 900 or so. And so if you if you look closely, you can see these little boxes and they really helped kind of locate where people were. Uh, so really interesting to see that happens. It also produced a lot of data. Uh, and so I think the IMX team will have a lot of data on their hands to kind of keep improving the show. I think Zenus AI were also there with the uh, kind of emotional tracking and excuse me, recognition throughout the show floor. Um, lots of cameras placed around, and I think that will also produce some really interesting data. So I know IMAX is gonna have a lot of data to play with to kind of build uh, better and bigger next year. The Texon uh, was there. Uh, it was at the opposite end of the Inspiration Hub, just like last year, which is a little frustrating for the uh, kind of techie people that wanna do education, but it is what it is. It has to be somewhere. Um, the Texon was pretty small, just like at IMAX in Frankfurt. I don't think technolo technology is going to take over the meetings and events world anytime soon. Not like maybe we thought during the COVID pandemic. This is definitely a sort of resettling into a sort of um, lesser role within the industry, but still an important role, of course. I think the stands that stood out were Cvent, Stova, WebEx Events, Bizabo, and Swugo, which had a, a stand with a big... Uh, partnership with Zoom. They announced a new partnership. So they really stood out as the ones that invested the most in the show. Most other stands have sort of 10 by 10s, relatively small boots. There was a lot of stuff happening in the area, but it definitely wasn't the busiest area of the show floor. Of course, uh, this was the first time the new IMAX brand was at IMAX America. We'd seen it at IMAX in Frankfurt. And again, the big sort of photo opportunity to stand with the life-sized IMAX logo uh, was popular. Um, and also, of course, the social media team at IMAX doing some great job, uh, really focused on the vertical videos. There was a lot of dancing. There was a lot of activity in the videos. Um, I think they were fun. And I think that's important. Um, taking videos of people holding appointments is not that interesting, even if it is the core of IMAX. I'm, the IMAX team managed to make them light, entertaining, but still kind of highlight different parts of the show or different things that you could be doing. So really enjoyed how the IMAX team kind of pulled the social media uh, from the show into the social media channels. For first-timers, uh, there were first-timer tours. And first-timers are a really interesting issue because, of course, there's no shame in not having been to IMAX and I'm always amazed that some people just haven't heard of it or haven't been and then coming for the first time is incredibly overwhelming even as a as a veteran I guess I've been to 10 shows or more um, it's still overwhelming and every time something changes and you're used to something or or you, things just aren't where you think they're going to be it is stressful so I can imagine for first timers it's it's really really stressful so IMAX are always trying to figure out ways to, to kind of improve that they put on tours they, they, which kind of guide people on, on how to make the most of the show. And this year, you could see in the photos, the tours were absolutely full and there was some fun activation with Jack, the party scientist, making everybody hug and do all sorts of things. It was fun, um, but it's a challenge, right? Because if you're new to the show, it is incredibly overwhelming. Um, and I know that some people come every year. It's just on their calendar. They always come, particularly on the exhibitor side, but also on the buyer side. Some people choose to kind of skip a year uh, and come every other year. And I think that's fine. Some people only come once and, and think that that's it and, and they're done with IMAX. And, and I think that's, that's quite short-sighted, I have to say. I think that's a little bit strange. Um, I think IMAX is a show that lives on what's new, what's interesting, what's what's new at destinations, what's new with products, what's new with technology. And if you only come once, you only get that one year's perspective, right? You're not going to come, you're not going to see uh, what's new every year. So I think it's important, even if you don't choose to come every year, to kind of make it a point to come every once in a while. And, and so it's refreshing, right? Because the IMAX kind of attendees refresh every year. I think there's something like 30 to 40 percent newcomers every year, uh, particularly on the buyer side. So it's important to get that right and to make sure you kind of 
introduce those people to, to how IMAX works very quickly. So hopefully these videos and, and the articles we put together also help with that. Uh, I know that people are overwhelmed, but you know, we're trying to do our best also along with IMAX, of course, to, to kind of make that work as best as possible. Finally, I wanted to say a few words about Vegas. Uh, there's a lot of stuff happening in Vegas. The Sphere had just opened and I saw a lot of people go to the U2 concert and also to the Postcards from Earth. I think it's called the kind of more uh, nature driven show that happens, I think, two or three times a day. Um, there's the Formula One coming up next month in November, the Super Bowl in February. So Vegas is really uh, kind of uh, gearing up for some big, big events. Of course, the Mandalay Bay had some renovations and we saw those during Smart Monday. The education area was really um, airy and bright and lighter, so it felt really nice. The Venetian announced a $188 million renovation to their convention space. And of course, the Fountain Blue Las Vegas is going to be opening in December, mid-December, with over three and a half thousand rooms and over half a million square feet of event space. This is a serious opening. This is the very large opening happening in Las Vegas. It's very close to the um, new West Halls of the Las Vegas Convention Center, so it's really handy for things happening there. Um, and the building is, is fascinating. I had a hard hat tour. Unfortunately, we couldn't take any photos, but it looks pretty good. The opening day of December 13th, I think is gonna be pretty tight. They're gonna be working really hard, but it's looking very good. The whole hotel looks beautiful. The lobby spaces, the meeting rooms that we could see were absolutely beautiful. There's no uh, right, hang right angles, no 90 degree right angles in the building. It's very smooth, it's very suave. It has that fountain blue, just like in Miami, that kind of uh, feel to it. Um, I think what's really interesting about that building is that it's built um, vertically. Uh, most um, Las Vegas resorts like the Mandalay Bay and the Venetian, there's a lot of walking involved. There's a lot of kind of long walks into different areas. And Fountain Blue, because it's very much a vertical kind of integrated uh, resort, it, it, you, you can kind of go between floors and do different things on different floors. And I think that's gonna save people a lot of time, a lot of space. Um, there's also little details, like for example, to access the meeting space, you don't have to go through the casino. Uh, little things like that are, are kind of nice and welcome for a place like Vegas that has a certain reputation. But of course, there's so many thousands of events that happen there every year. It's, it's really good to have the options to have this kind of more modern thinking about how to move people around and how to organize events. So really welcome. Vegas is definitely booming. Unfortunately, because it's also booming, it's also a bit of a mess at the moment, particularly when it comes to traffic, uh, roadworks, just, you know, there's a lot of stress at the moment. And hopefully this will go away once things are kind of better. I don't know what the plans are with the Formula One because I know the Formula One will will work, will work drive right the way through the strip. So there's a lot of activity happening right there. For example, if you go to watch the Bellagio Fountain show, um, most of it is covered now with stands waiting for the Formula One to happen. And this is a month before the actual Formula One race. So it's a bit kind of troublesome that the Formula One is taking so much attention. And of course, I think it's a 10 year deal, so it's gonna happen every year for 10 years. And if this level of construction is happening every year for a month or even more before the show, uh, before the Formula One, that means kind of October and November are gonna be very intense traffic for 10 years to come, which isn't great news for any event like IMAX that happens during that time. Just the long delays, I mean, it always takes a little while to get from one venue to the other in Vegas. Most of the time you do it through an Uber or a taxi, something like that, or buses for certain things. Um, but it just felt that you needed to leave double the time. And of course, an event like IMAX where there's a lot of offsite dinners, offsite activations, different things happening, I was trying to cram everything in and I was always late, particularly when I had to move between venues. And so that's gonna be a bit stressful, I think, who might came out, come out on top when it comes to this is, is places like the Caesar Forum, which have Caesars has a lot of hotels around the Caesars Forum, which are walkable or easy, easily accessible. I think places like that are gonna be um, the winners because if you need that much space or that many rooms uh, for smaller events that are contained into one Las Vegas property, which ultimately is probably most of them, I think that's fine as long as you can get there and kind of contain your audience in one building, it's great. But when you're moving around a lot, that's gonna be a problem. So a little bit of a note about how busy Vegas is. Of course, I'm sure Vegas is very happy to be busy. So um, it is a kind of a, just a note. So congratulations to the IMAX team. Congratulations to everybody who participated in the show. It was a pretty good show. I mean, very good show actually, just outstanding. And um, really the notes, the negative notes or the, less, the room for improvement are very small. So um, congratulations to everybody. I hope everybody got great business. I hope the world connected. I hope that we can grow from here in a sustainable way uh, and not go back 
but uh, I hope hopefully that's what everybody's looking forward to next year and also at IMAX in Frankfurt. So hope to see you there.